objective for this speed build is to salvage prom. My daughter's prom was canceled, so we're throwing a prom in the backyard. We're going to build a party light. It's going to be sound activated, reuse an existing fixture, keep costs low, and no engineering or time for rework. Time is of the essence to get this done before the big day. Key components for this build is going to be the Tronix Pro 18 key music sensor, turning the music signals and switching the lights on and off, and a 12 volt 10 watt standard base LED bulb. Um, we're going to use a 12 volt battery pack, that's not really significant, and a light fixture. In my case, we're going to use a traffic signal that I've had laying around for decades, um, doing nothing. It's part of another invention that never happened, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to reuse this for our party light. First step is going to be to kind of do an assessment on the fixture, see anything that's broken or needs to be fixed to be able to make this all work. Uh, as you can see, some of the time and weather has damaged some of the rubber seals and things, so that lens is going to have to be uh, replaced. Uh, the screws holding it in are going to have to be replaced and some other stuff as well, just basically clean it up. You may not realize this, but most of the traffic lights use these standard base light bulbs to function. Uh, they just have a nice reflector and do a really good job of projecting it for controlling traffic. Here I'm just doing an assessment on the wiring. Uh, for some reason the colors aren't always standard in these uh, traffic signals and some of the wires had been broken off. I don't know if that was from doing using this for another project or just had broken off over time or debris hitting it or whatever. Once I have the first set of wires identified, um, you notice on these controllers, it works a little bit differently than you're used to. The positives are common and the negative is the side that switches. And maybe somebody who understands LED technology knows better why you would kind of do those backwards, uh, but that's the way it's wired. So I'm assessing which ones are all gonna go into that common positive and stripping off a little more than an eighth of an inch for each one of the connectors to go into that uh, fitting. The light controller uses a screw clamp terminal block and I'm showing here first thing you want to do most of them you have to back out it's random some of them are already backed out some of them aren't uh, but usually you have to back them out so that the little clamp opens up and you can put the first wire in basically I'm just doing this as a placeholder to kind of see how this is going to go and before I finish anything I'm going to realize I need that on the top so I have to feed all the wires through um, but you'll see me figure that out in a second. where it's dawning on me that I need to feed these through the hole before I connect them to the screw clamp terminal block. So I'm going to back out the one connection I have, feed them all through to the top section just so I know where the controller is and use that as kind of my jumping point for all the wiring. So again, connecting up the remaining two lights. Again, positive is common on this type of controller and the negative is the switch side. So just more stripping and pulling through and uh, putting into that screw clamp block. If you've never used stranded wires into a screw clamp block like this or pretty much anything, uh, the first thing you want to do is find out which way the wire is normally turning. 
uh, after you strip it and then twist it a little bit tighter so it fits uh, snugly in the screw clamps. Finishing up uh, the wiring here, getting ready to drop the controller into that top block. Uh, next is going to be installing the light bulbs, uh, tidying up a little bit. Uh, just in case you are wondering the cost on this, I'll put down in the comments, but it uh, around $35 with the controller and the 12 volt light bulbs. The 12 volt light bulbs are 12 volt, uh, 10 watt LED light bulbs, and they appear lumen wise to be about a 60 watt incandescent bulb. Plug it all in, hook it up to my iPhone, and give it a smoke test. Uh, amazingly, this is one of those that the first run through apply power to the uh, to the box, and uh, things happen rather quickly here. Now that it looks like the test went well, it's just going to be close the case all up and do some cleanup on uh, the outside of the fixture. You can see it makes a much better presentation with the colored lenses on versus just flashing white lights. outdoor test see how it looks uh, in the real condition it's gonna be working in outside at night and it's just exceeded all my expectations on this project Kind of another cool feature to this controller is it comes with an RF remote and if you're not using something that's going to trigger the lights by music you can set up some static bloom flash slow uh, fade effects with the lights uh, because you do need music for them to fire um, in the music mode if there's no sound they won't go off so you can do this in other kind of static situations if you want different kind of light controller so there's that Overall, my daughter said she had a fantastic pandemic-style prom, and the light was uh, part of the part of the party. So we were very, very happy with the way it all worked out. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know what you think of it in the comments. Uh, subscribe for more content like this, and be on the lookout for the next build.